What's going on gardeners? It's Saturday, November 26th and it is a gorgeous late fall day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. On today's video, I'm going to teach you how to safely transition your cold sensitive potted plants indoors for the winter. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon storefront and spread shop in the video description for a list of the gardening products I use and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Now that I have this amazing new sunroom addition to my house, I no longer have to painstakingly cart my cold sensitive coffee and citrus trees in and out of the garage all throughout winter. I can just leave them in here. However, I can't just randomly decide one day that I'm going to pick them up and bring them from outside to inside. If I did that, there could be catastrophic consequences. Potted trees need to be transitioned indoors slowly and acclimated over time for two very distinct reasons. The first thing that we have to account for is sun intensity. Look, we all understand that we can't just randomly one day decide to cart out all of our transplants started indoors or our overwintered indoor plants outside into the full sun during the spring because the light outside is so much more intense and full UV spectrum that you will scorch and burn all of your plant's leaves and you can even kill the plant. Well, I'm here to tell you that the process is exactly the same in the winter time, but in reverse. In the winter, outdoors, the sun is getting progressively weaker and weaker. So when we randomly cart it indoors one day, the plants go through a period of shock because the sun was already weak enough. Now you have them in front of window light, which is a tiny fraction of the strength of, of the sun outside during the weakest time of the year. Well, that might not be enough for them and they will go through a freak out process stress and they could lose their leaves or even die as a result. How difficult a tree is to acclimate to indoor lighting is going to depend on the species of tree. My coffee plants inside my sunroom are pretty easy to acclimate because they are naturally a shade or part shade tree anyway and in their native habitat don't get a tremendous amount of sun. My citrus, on the other hand, are extremely finicky, and generally speaking, the more light a tree demands, the more difficult they are to acclimate to indoors. Citrus are one of the worst when it comes to acclimating to indoor light. You have to do this over a very slow period of time by briefly introducing them to indoor light and carrying them inside for a few hours and back outside or inside for a day and outside for a day for them to adjust. Otherwise, they often freak out and defoliate. Now, last week we had three extremely cold days that were way below average temperatures and I had to carry my citrus trees inside in my sunroom. And despite three days, all of these leaves that you're seeing falling all over the ground, that's from the stress of the citrus defoliating in my full sun sunroom that doesn't even have real glass windows. Those are easy breeze vinyl windows. So it's basically really strong greenhouse plastic. And they're still defoliating from that small change of light. So imagine how dramatically they can defoliate if you were to bring them in in a more northern climate and put them in front of a double pane window. Well, they can really freak out and lose all of their leaves. And sometimes this can even be deadly. I've gone through this, unfortunately, with my blood orange. I went away on vacation four Februarys ago and I carried it in in front of my patio door. And when I came home, every single leaf was on the floor and I thought the tree was going to die. It took it all year to recover before it finally budded back out and regrew its leaves. Thankfully, it survived and I will never make that mistake again. You want to make sure that you acclimate your plants to indoor lighting well ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute, until the cold comes to pull them inside. Start a few weeks ahead of time. You want to do this while the nights are still mild and the days are still warm. The way you want to acclimate them is on day one, carry it inside for half a day, then carry it back outside for the late afternoon sun. The second day, bring it inside for a full day. Then the next day, bring it back outside into the sun then bring it in for two days, then bring it back outside one day, bring it in for three days, then bring it back outside one day. And keep doing that for probably about a two week transitional period. That way it'll start getting used to window lighting or whatever lighting you'll give them. Don't do it all in one shot or you may lose all the leaves off your tree like I did that one year. 
You can see the yellowing that is happening in these leaves already. That is a result of bringing them in too quickly as a response to those handful of cold days. So you can see how easily all the leaves are falling off just to the touch. So because it's going to be very warm tonight with a low only around 50 degrees, I pulled all of my citrus trees back outside to reacclimate and get a little bit of sun. And hopefully that will stop the defoliating process. The second reason why you must slowly acclimate your potted plants indoors over time is to prevent any type of pest infestations. Now pest infestations are harder to get outside because there are so many different carnivorous animals out there, but when you bring them indoors, you are isolating them to an area with no predators. So if you bring in any aphids or any scale, they can easily take over all of your plants and just destroy them in no time flat because there are no predators animals indoors to help take care of the problem. For that reason, you must treat your plants with pesticides beforehand in order to prevent any type of infestation. And the pesticide that I like using for this treatment is the natural pesticide pyrethrin. Pyrethrin is extracted from the chrysanthemum flower and it is a very potent nerve toxin and is a contact killer for all insects. So what I like to do is I like to apply this three times over the course of 15 days. So it'll be day one, day eight, and day 15, so three separate treatments. And the reason why you want to do this is because individual treatments are only going to kill the adult insects. It's not going to kill any eggs that are left behind. So you need to break the reproductive cycle because after that first treatment, there could be eggs left behind that will then hatch and then repopulate the plant. You also have to figure that each individual treatment is not going to contact 100% of the potential crevices on the plant. So you want to treat them at least three times to make sure you kill any babies that follow and also get in every single little crack and crevice and under every leaf of the plant. Now I will be applying this natural insecticide at the manufacturer recommended dosage using my battery operated ULV sprayer because this gives me the best coverage. And of course, if you're interested in where to buy either this ULV sprayer or the pyrethrin natural insecticide, they are all linked down below on my Amazon storefront under the list disease prevention and pest control. So check that out if you're interested in these items. Now it's best to apply this insecticide at sunset, which it is right now, because you don't want to harm any kind of pollinators and the bees go away uh, during sunset because they are diurnal. You don't want to get this insecticide inside the flowers that could attract bees during the day. So that's why I'm spraying now. Now I'm going to go from plant to plant using my ULV sprayer and I'm going to make sure to cover every square inch of the plant, both on the tops of leaves, the bottoms of the leaves, the soil line in case there's any fungus gnats crawling around in there, as well as also try and spray the pots just in case there are any kind of fungus gnats or other insects that are hiding in the cracks and crevices of the pots themselves. And now all of my potted plants have been sprayed with insecticide, so we will allow them to dry overnight because we know it's going to be very mild. And this was my second treatment of insecticide so far. I treated them last week before I had to carry them in for that shocking, very cold freeze. Uh, now this is my second treatment right now, and I'll give them another treatment next weekend as well. And that should take care of any pest problems. And over the next week or two, I will again be slowly carrying them inside and then back outside. So they will be fully hardened off and acclimated to the indoor environment inside my sunroom for the winter. And that right there is how you can safely carry in your container plants for the winter so they don't freak out from the violent change in sun intensity and so you don't bring them in with any type of pest infestations. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or that I use for real life in general in my garden, they are all linked down below on my Amazon storefront in the video description and check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. If you have any questions about this process, please ask them in the comments section below and I will do my best to answer the questions. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Dale, isn't it a beautiful day out today? Look at the pond and the blue sky. Oh, everything's looking so nice. Oh, he's getting his sniffs in. We're enjoying our walk. We've had some great weather for walking now that it's nice and cool, and Dale is relaxed and happy.